I've got five o'clock. I'm gonna call this meeting to order. I don't think it's working, but okay. I'm gonna put it up. Um, yeah, it's. I don't think it's. Hello. No, we're good. We're good. Um, I've got five o'clock. Call this meeting to order, June 27th, 2024. Uh, I'll ask uh, Brother Coleman if you'll lead us in a word of prayer. Let us bow our heads. Father God, we just want to thank you for today. We thank you for this meeting. We thank you for the understanding and for the people of Hartford and our county, Lord. Lord, we ask you to just be in the midst and, Lord, touch our words and let it be yay, yay, and not nay, nay. In Jesus' mighty <laughs> name we pray. Amen. 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 Like the way you put that. <laughs> That's right. All right. Um, before you have the minutes of the last meeting, after reviewed, I'll ask for a motion to accept the minutes as read. I make a motion to accept the minutes. I second. I have a first by Mary Bell, second by Tony. All in favor say aye. Aye. Holds like aye. Motion carries. All right. Um, Tara, do you have anything to bring up? No, Okay. Um, I will be getting maybe with David here in a little while because I think we got a couple of hearings that. Coming up? Yep. Okay. So we'll get together on that. Pretty soon. All right, thank you. Um, before you have the financial reports, after reviewed, I'll ask for a motion to accept the financial statements. Make a motion to accept the financial reports. I have a first and second. Did you get Mary Bell and David? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, like side. Motion carries. All right. Action in the old business. We don't have no old business. So we'll go on down to um, new business. I'm going to ask uh, Tim with GRAD to come up and explain this resolution 24-03. Tom. I thought it was Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tom Lovett. <laughs> uh, thank you for having me here. I appreciate appreciate your time. Uh, my name is Tom Lovett. I'm with Brad Hill and Pro. The reason I'm here today is uh, the city of Hartford is receiving federal highway administration funds for a road project. And, and I'll be very honest with you, I don't know what the project is, but I know you guys are receiving federal highway funds. The Federal Highway Administration has changed a policy this year. It says that any organization or community that's receiving Federal Highway Administration road funds for a highway project must sign off on or draft a Title VI plan. And Title VI is nothing new. It's nothing that you're not already doing. It's nothing crazy different. Title VI was a part of the Civil Rights um, le uh, legislation in 1964. What Title VI says is that you will not discriminate on the basis of race, color, or national origin. Okay? So, I mean, this is not new legislation. This has been in the law of land since 1964. What they're saying now is, they're saying if you're getting FHWA money, you're supposed to be compliant with this. Okay? They want you to sign something that says we are compliant with this. So that's really what this is. So what they said was, they, they, they told Kentucky Transportation Cabinet this. Kentucky Transportation Cabinet said, well, what we could do is we could go to, go to all these communities and the River Fork Homesboro, which is where I was yesterday, and we can make them draft. This is grads. This is grads plan. This is 95 pages long, and I maintain this. I submit it every year for approval. Uh, and they can make you draft one of these. Or they said what you could do is go to each of the communities, and they could adopt just sign off on the plan and say we will support and live by the plan that the ad for that, you know, that you are in would, that they have that has been approved. So like you guys fall under in, into the grad region, this would, Bowling Green is signing off on the one from grad, that sort of thing. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, you guys have to do four things to be compliant. You have to adopt our plan, or you have to adopt a plan. And like I said, we're recommending you do this one because this one 
has been approved by FHWA and the Office of Civil Rights at KYTC. That got done uh, May 6th, I think, is when they signed this. So, I mean, it's very recently been accepted. So there were, this is brand new. It's just been approved. It's everything you need, everything right. you need to do. Uh, so you have to adopt a plan. You have to provide an organizational chart for the city administration. And it doesn't have to be everybody. It has to be like the mayor, uh, who the commissioners are, who is your Title VI person, who is going to be the person responsible if there is a complaint, who can somebody come to in Harper if they feel like they've been discriminated against by a city employee, um, and how has that person got access to the mayor? So it could be, you know, the city clerk, and you say, okay, well, the city clerk works in the same building, and here's the org chart, they work side by side, so you have to submit an org chart. Um, they have provided you guys with a questionnaire that you have to fill out that says, you know, here's what the demographics of Hartford is, here's what the demographics of the city commission is. Um, and then the final thing is you have to do some training. And it's basically people have to watch a video that says, this is what Title VI discrimination is, this is why you don't want to do it, here's how to avoid doing it. Okay? So I've been working with Lisa uh, going back and forth on, on getting these requirements filled. Uh, this is this is the, uh, really the easy one. If you guys, she has a resolution that we uh, we provided you language that you just have to sign off on. So that's what I'm here for. That's my pitch. I, if anybody has any questions, if you want to see this, I'll, I'll happily leave this copy with you. Um, if you have any questions or concerns or anything you need to know, please. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to answer those. Okay. So I guess that needs to be read. And then, and then we need a vote. And then we need a roll call vote that? No, and on that one, just a regular, just a regular vote. Okay. Stacia, will you read it? Yep. Resolution 2403, whereas the federal government enacted Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, as amended to prevent discrimination on the grounds of race, color, or national origin, and whereas Section 162A of the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1963, Section 324, Title 23, USC, identifies sex as a class protected from discrimination. And whereas KRS 344.015 outlines implementation plans for the Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 as amended by state agencies. And whereas it is a requirement of the Kentucky Department of Transportation and the U.S. Department of Transportation, the agencies receiving federal financial assistance adopt a Title VI plan. And whereas the City of Hartford is the recipient of federal financial assistance from the Kentucky Department of Transportation, and whereas the City of Hartford assures that all of its program services and activities will be free from discrimination, whether those program services or activities are federally funded or not. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Hartford City Commission, to say council, as its yeah. regular public meeting of June 27, 2024, do hereby adopt the attached Title VI plan. Thank you, Anna. Uh, if, can, uh, can I just, one thing real, real fast. When she was reading that, reminded me of something that, that I wanted to make clear. So Title VI says race, color, or national origin. And one thing that, that we, I, I told you, I update this thing every year, and one of the changes they had every year, uh, they had this take us out last year and we put it back in this year, is the word sex. And when she read the resolution, the word sex is in there. Uh, sex is a protected class. And in reference to this, it's specifically gender. But we've been told that federal courts have ruled that that can be construed to mean LBGTQ and all the things that that encompasses. Okay, so sex is in there as well. So if you're gay or trans or whatever, also protected in the of sex or under this resolution. That's it. That's all. Right. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Do we need the wording changed before it's passed, or can we just... Do I change that to commissioners to council? Council. Um, I think if you... That's not you're not going to sign it right this second. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll be fine. Okay. Um, That's fine. <clears throat> do I have a motion to approve this resolution? I make a motion. Go ahead, Ariel. I make a motion when we adopt this resolution. I have 2403. I second. I have a first by Mary Bell, second by Stacia.
All in favor say aye. Aye. Pulls like a sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Chris. <laughs> Which one do you want me to start with? Uh, I've got I've got you down for the for the big number one there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know that word. <laughs> the the raw water line at the water plant, as we talked of at the last council meeting, getting in very bad shape. It's getting deteriorating. It's corroding. Yeah. But getting holes in it all the time. We're constantly repairing it the best we can and to get by. The boats are breaking and rusting off. We've been trying to replace them as we can. Uh, we we reached out to Electrals, which Electrals does most of our contracting work. They said it was beyond them that they wouldn't even consider touching it. So they put us in touch with another company called Bound too. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on just a second. Okay. If y'all not recalled on this, this was brought up at the mm -hmm. last meeting, but it was it was. Had to be out for the bid. Yes, right. So basically, I didn't want you to go through that whole oh, yeah, spelling well, again because it's whole already whole been there after right. I've sat there and thought about it. And yeah. I was like, wait a minute. Like, I've yeah. heard this <laughs> so, so basically, um, we got we, one we bid, got right? One bid, and that's what I was getting ready to okay. start with. All right, there you go. Uh, with Bound 2, they, they're the only one that submitted the bid, and it's for $98,746. They said it would take an estimate of three days to complete the job. That's not bad. It's not all. bad. Originally, it was seven to ten days. Really? And but during this time, though, we would have to purchase water from the county. We'll have to be in agreement with Eric over here. <clears throat> and that is a question that you need to get yes. with Eric, yes, get with Eric to make sure that they can make our flow yes. uh, happen with for it within the city. With that, and he told me before me and him discussed this last year, and he said. Two to three days was fine, but seven to ten was okay. kind of pushing it, but I will get with him. Just make sure that he's still yes. okay with okay. that. And then... And figure, we'll figure out how we we'll go yeah. about billing and yeah. setting all that up, too. Okay. All right. Does anybody have any questions about this? Is it warranty? Yes, it does have a warranty to it. Uh, I, I didn't see that. Right. On here, but I know he'll stand behind any repairs, any leaks. Yeah. Anything he says that happens, he'll stand behind it. And Luttrell's actually highly recommended this company. They they said they stand behind them. Yeah. They're they're very reputable. Does uh, his does all that go into contract though? Him standing behind. I mean, is that written? It's yes. not just a gentleman's agreement that he's standing behind his work. Uh, and I think this needs to if if we're in agreement to this, I think this would be a good project to take our out of the ARPA funds. Um because it is needed and my vision is is at one point I want to get that down there and shape again where I, I want be, kids were, to come down there and see what's operating and see what's all That right there about. is the worst part of the plant when you see it. it yeah. It's very rough. So that's my vision is I want to get that back up to the capacity where it once was. So, um, with that being said, do I have a motion to accept this bid at $98,746 to come out of ARPA? I make a motion that this money come out of ARPA funds. I'll second it. I have a first by Stacia, second by Mr. Coleman. All in favor say aye. 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 Polls like sigh, motion carries. Thank you. Uh, uh, right now, give or take three. So, and we got to December, so we're going to have to. Go. Um, now explain the other one there. Okay. Uh, one day we come into our plant, and we determined that we couldn't get enough water from the river. 
There is two river pumps that sits down here behind Charlie's Market that pumps water up to the water plant. One pump had completely burned up. It just it hasn't been rebuilt or repaired in over 10 years. Last year was the last time it was pulled and repaired was 2014. At that time it was rebuilt, but it hasn't had any repairs since then. It just has a lot of wear and tear on it, and the pump has went out. The last time we had it rebuilt, I actually checked on it, and I think it cost 3,400 bucks to have it rebuilt. But with inflation over the last 10 years, it's went up to 7,319 dollars. But it's something that we have to have to get water to the plant. We have one pump that's still going, but if it goes out, we're shut, we're completely shut down. Yeah. Now, that's their only lifeline is extra. So that's, I mean, and we've had, me and him's had this discussion, and that's one of those unique things that it has to, you know, we have to have something like that. So. And ARPA funds can take those um, too? Yeah, I think, I think that would be fine. Because right now we have, I have, I think we have a little bracket for our for, for water, so uh, we we would still be within that amount. So I think that would be fine. So this is a rebuild price, is there a this, this, this is a rebuild pump, a price. I also got a price on a brand new pump just to see what the equivalent would be, and it's twenty thousand dollars for a new pump. <laughs> How? Uh, how long does it last? Well, they normally, well, the last few has lasted 10 to 12, 10 to 15 years, depending on how much they ran. But hopefully uh, they'll last longer. <laughs> what about on the rebuild of it? What? Uh, the, well, the, that was with rebuild. Oh, okay. I'm we, sorry. We've never bought new pumps before. They're, they're the original pumps from 1991. They've just been rebuilt multiple times. Well, maybe we'd be a little bit more prudent if we would go ahead and repair this one and plan on buying a new one to replace the other one. That, that would be something good to look at in the future. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm not, not opposed to sit here and worry about it. We're going to mm-hmm. have to shut them all down. Yep. Yeah. I agree that would be something to look at in the future. I think that's something we need to pursue. So rebuild and a new one? Not at the same time. No. I mean, if we have that kind of money, but... Do you have the ARPA funds to do the new purchase? Do what? Do you have the ARPA funds right now to do a new, uh, new pump? Yeah, we we have enough. If y'all want to well, they take out an ARPA, mm-hmm. we, we can do that. What about you? I have yeah. no problem taking it out of ARPA. Mm-hmm. Well, he's already in the process of, cause we, you know, what we, we talked about it as an emergency. He's already got it torn yep. apart and... Okay. He's already started the process of getting it ready. That's to fine. Rebuild. That's so, fine. Well, but then we've got, got another one. We've got another pump. Yeah, we're talking about 15 years. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I'm fine with that. Yes. That we would still have enough to do to 15 that. Years at least. Can we buy a new one, rebuild this one, and put it up for hard times? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you'll still have it. So yep. I'm, yeah, good. Exactly. I'm good with it. I, mean, go I just want to it. make sure that... So rebuild this one, and then... Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm all right with that. buy a new one. That's something y'all can put in. Be about 27. Yeah. So it would be nice to have you yeah, one and have that yes. for a start. There goes your raise. Well, you have to make your use. Yeah, there goes your raise. Now, here's that right. Uh-huh. That's, what you put up. Is there any Three projects in there, right? yeah. coming down the pike that before so, December that we need to hang on to money for? No, so we st- we're still well, protected a little bit. I need to talk to you about also. We've got another little issue. Uh... I have, I'm still working on getting prices on it right now. Okay. The mixing system has went out in the big million gallon tank. Oh, that's great. The one that we just repaired a couple years ago? Uh, the one that we put in, I think, in 2018 or 19. Yeah. That, that mixer has went out, and it's actually affecting the water quality <laughs> in the system right now. So the chlorine residuals are dropping down right now. We're having to put a lot So who was right that there. that done that job? Joe Bailey or, or with water management. And it engineered it up, and there was a company that put it in, and they have went out of business now. We caught, me and Josh tried to contact them yesterday, and they have sold out to two or three other three companies. Three illegal stuff? No. Uh, but, what? <laughs> what are we talking about cost-wise to get this well, fixed or replaced? We really, 
We really don't know a cost right now because we haven't been able to find anyone to fix it, but there's <laughs> multiple ways. It's a it's electric pump sitting in the mop bottom of that water tank. Yeah. You're either going to have to dump that million gallons of water up and put it out on the ground and then pay someone going there and repair it, or you'll have to pay divers to come in and put the pump in underwater. Or there's an, a third option, Jay Hoffman, if you remember yes. him that put yep. the mixer in the little tank, mm -hmm. he can put a new mixing system that doesn't use any electricity, it will never wear out, there, there's a lifetime warranty on it. Correct me if I'm wrong, that's about 165000 on that no, job. No, it's, it's under 40000 Oh, okay. Oh, that sounds better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that claim better. Uh, <laughs> How much is it? <laughs> well, there's no moving parts. There's well, why didn't we use this first time? A lot. The company that, well, Joe Bailey, the engineer, that didn't know about these kind of mixers at the time. It was. It was. There wasn't a lot of them being used at that time. I think there was. Uh, newer. This was. Uh, I think that there was some miscommunication on on this, and this is prior to me. But this person was saying this, this person was saying this. This one was wanting to sell a product, and this other one was wanting to sell a product. This guy <laughs> come by cheaper, yep. and now he's out of business. Mm -hmm. so. I have a question. What is ARPA? It's uh, American Rescue... Uh, yeah, it basically goes back. So that will expire. Yeah. Yeah, it has to be used by December. Yeah. And it's limited as far as infrastructure type projects. Yeah. 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 All right. As time goes on and we get closer to the even hotter months like August and stuff, chlorine will be dropping even more significantly. We'll have to be flushing more. That means longer hours at the plant, more water being put on the ground that we're not getting. Profit from. I mean, you're saying it's affecting the quality of the water now. Yes. How? Because the chlorine is dropping. There's not enough chlorine so to in other keep, words, it dis we, keep it disinfected. We've water. got a real problem. We, we do have a problem. Turn into well, a it real could problem. be. We're, we're trying to stay on top of it right now by flush. That, that's the only way to keep up ahead of it if the mixers are down. The mixer basically keeps the chlorine and the chemicals throughout the entire. Yes. The flushing yes. allows it to basically. I know. Flush. I yes. know that. That's yes. why I was asking. Yes. What quality was being affected? We're, 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 we're passing everything right now. Everything's safe to drink, but it could get out of hand if we don't yeah. get a handle of it in the future. Well, here's what I would say: if it comes to if it comes to an emergency thing, we need to, you need to go on and get the prices on it. I, I, I got both, I got Jay giving me a price on putting the new and then if it, and I'm trying to find. Someone to repair that one to see the price difference. And then we need to, we need if we need to end up yes. having a special call meeting okay. to get this resolved. Okay. Um, That's what me and Lisa was talking is about. Is Joe Bailey still working up there? We need yes. to, we need yes. to make sure that I we stay on top of it. He, he just told I called him and talked to him Wednesday. He told me to call the manufacturer, and that's when I found out they had sold out and they're no longer. In yeah, sitting on the beach. Is this? Yep. Uh, I mean, I'll just ask from a standpoint of. How urgent is this? Is this something we need to declare an emergency to, to bypass certain bidding requirements, or have we got time to take care of that? I would I would try to get on it as soon as possible because it takes. When I talk to Jay, it takes six to eight weeks to get those all the parts. Oh, can we do the emergency thing? I don't know how the bid process is on that. I've never. You know, I mean, if we declare an emergency, then we're you know, on the risk of it on certain things. That we we have this every year this time of year. Huh? We have elevated every year this time of year. It's not anything any different. I've been waiting on the year to probably start falling in. It is on now. Yep. It always goes up to the heat. You can't just okay. ignore them. Make sure it's not going to change your But mandates on the situation. Yeah. 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 Customers have it, too. Jay Hoffman has problems, and I can't get it. We're also under free water. The great order states that we have to have the mix. I got you. I would trust him. That's the concern I have is we don't want to be so we get not fun. Yes. So we need to be in the Yeah, I know. We don't have to be in the All right. Back to this pump. Did we already vote on that? No. I need a first. I need a, I need a motion on this raw water intake pump too. From ARPA. 
from ARPA if if I have a motion on that. Make a motion to take the money from ARPA. And that's seven thousand three hundred nineteen dollars. Yes, I second. I have a first by Mary Bell, second by Stacia. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, like so. Motion carries. Thank you. Do we need to right. go and get that And then are one? you going to try to get those um, soon? I think we can do that. I should have them by Monday. Why don't you give me a price on a new yeah. one? Okay. And we'll, we'll let's do that at the next meeting. Okay. And okay. and just that way we have an accurate yes. uh, number on that okay. as well. Okay. I'll and, do that. and if you have something that we need beforehand, let's see where we're at. Okay. I will. And keep us updated. All so. right. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, if he can get us the numbers, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with it. So. But I, I, I will say that I think this time of the year, it, it kind of stays like that in general a little bit anyways because of the temperatures. So maybe, ideally, let's try to regroup it. On it and You keep an uh, active a log on it and see where we're at. And, I've got the guys who've been going out each day and flushing, making sure that the corn's staying up and keeping everything stated and logged. Yep. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, The next thing is is I I have uh, looked at the ideas of sidewalk work. Uh, y'all have probably seen some in town that we've been doing. Um, one thing that I would I would like to see is basically on Clay Street going on on down towards the hospital area and then cutting on McMurtry, basically having that access going into the hospital and signature health care area. Um, I think this is a, a good thing because we want to make sure that the citizens can get to the hospital even if they're walking or anything to that sort. Um, and 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 ideally, um, they did. The hospital did say that they wanted to help any way that they could. Uh, but I told them I was like, you know, we we want to, we want to help you all out. They're doing good things. They've got they've got that new surgical unit open. And I, I want to make sure that they feel the welcome that we appreciate them as well. So uh, I will I will say that CC Robinson called and emailed me and said the hospital is willing to sign any easement agreements or anything that yeah. would assist in, in getting the sidewalks constructed. So and on the, that we can get an easement for and right. make sure that we have good. And on the other side, what's on the by the ER side? What's that? Is that Big Murtry. Um, is that oh, Gillespie? Yeah, on Gillespie. Gillespie, Gillespie yes. Um, they, I even told them that if they wanted to contribute to this, basically on the shoulder of the left side, kind of have like a little walk path, but still have it accessible for traffic. It won't bother anybody. Because what you're having right now is you are having a lot of hospital employees who are walking along yes. the street to get to the back. So line. that's, so. I think this would be a good thing. I think it would too. I think it'd be nice if you just bring it right on out to Umming Bird Lane. <laughs> <laughs> you would walk on it. <laughs> oh, All right. So that price for that job there is sixteen thousand six hundred and thirty two dollars. <throat> Do I have a a motion to approve? I'll make a motion. I have a first by Tony. Second. Second by Coleman. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like so. Motion carries. All right. Um, the last thing that I have that's not on there, um, we had a breakdown on our garbage truck. It's just a repair. And it was... Um, $3,802.18. Um, what was that? A pen or something? Or, uh, yeah, on the oh, yeah, the lift gate for the trash yeah. trash cans. Um, and I, I would like to see if we can get a motion to pay for that out of occupational tax. I make a motion that we 
get that from the occupation tax. Oh, okay. I have a first by Coleman, second by Renfro. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Those like so, motion carries. Um, informational, we do have the summer uh, fun day at Ellis Park from 10.30 to 1.30. Um, so be sure and see if we can get the word out. I think that's going to be bouncy house and snow cones, and maybe they're going to have the fire truck spraying water for the kids and everything. So that'll be the 29th. June so, the 29th? Uh-huh. The Saturday. It's like day after tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, of course, y'all have this paper in front of you all. Um, and the other informational thing for the public as well is we are going to start the Hearts Transit. It, it takes off Monday morning. And so if anybody um, needs any uh, uh, question, has any questions on this, just call this number and and let's see if we can get the word out to try to make this thing happen into a good thing. Um, I hope it takes off well. I've had someone request to stop on it. I don't know when it's going to be adjusted or when. So basically right now it's going to be a trial error until we get this thing established pretty good. And and I think uh, those of y'all don't know, Buddy Shrewsbury is going to be the driver. Um, and I think that we're going to make the adjustments and if if somebody needs a pickup somewhere, we're going to try to help it out to get this thing promoted and take off in the right direction. Um, but we had to well, have I've a starting point. I've heard a lot point. of good things I coming out of people. I have too. There was a I mean, request they're excited about it. for these apartments. Well, well I, and, and, I, names left me. and I think that's going to be on that list okay. anyways. Once he's in that area, and if they call him, yeah. they'll just go down okay. there. It'll, okay. be, it'll be taken care of. And that could be added on, and we'll take care of it. And my sister, she, I was telling her about that, and she said, well, Nancy, I can't send her groceries from one place to her house. And I said, I hope that somebody remember that just because she's gone. Well, and, and ideally... <laughs> so how do, you know... That can't ideally, be it's one of those things that we... We'll, we Buddy's the type of person, we'll take care of it, and he, you know, he'll, he'll make sure that he can get them there if he's not... Busy, tied up, and stuff like that. That's a that's a lot. Yeah, but that's one of those things too that if it's something to that sort, that's where we're relying on grits and the senior center to kind of handle that little angle of it for the most part because we're not we don't have the wheelchair accessible yeah. set up or anything to that nature yet. Um, so that's that's just a starter for us, but. Is Walmart a new addition? Yes. Okay. I did, I thought there was liability going out city limits. No. Okay. No. All right. Good deal. So, and that's you know we're not going to do we're not going to have a pickup or drop off. That's just stating if they need to go there. Gotcha. Uh, we'll we'll go there. So it'll be all right. Um. Good thing. And I think we should, on another information, we should have our downtown speakers getting installed within the next few weeks, so I'm excited to see that get done. Um, other than that, I think I'm, I'm good. Um, I do have um, David Henderson. Here, code enforcement. He's going to give us a little briefing update on what he's been at. Uh, David Henderson, I'm new code enforcement officer. Uh, since I took over, I'd like to really say I appreciate all of Lisa's help. Uh, it has been a transition for me to to come in and take over, but uh, uh, she's been helping me through all this and going around and checking everything and. And uh, as since I've started, I think I've had uh, nine warnings that I've given out. Uh, everybody's been doing a very well job of taking care of it after I've, you know, uh, sent out I think two citations so far, and one's came in and paid, and the other one's still ongoing as of as of now. So, uh, but everybody seems to be trying to 
you know, take care of their of their property and and uh, you know, once once I do give the citations, you know, or the warnings, I mean, uh, you know, go back and keep an eye on everything and, and check out. And, and I have had a few phone calls. Uh, the the ladies in the office have you know give me some calls of concerned people, and I've I've contacted them, so I'll go by and check them out and and uh, uh, you know just try to try to take care of the of the city and keep it as as nice as we can, you know. I mean, uh, and if y'all see anything, I'm gonna hope, let them know. They'll call me. Uh, do everything we can. Work together to to uh, keep everything nice and, and looking good for for Hartford. So yeah, I do appreciate it. Thank you. Anybody got any questions for me? Feel free to. Oh, you know. oh no, Dave. Dave, since you're here and Nancy's here, I know on occasion she does ask the code enforcement officer sometimes to accompany her or to deliver things for violations. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, yeah, okay. I think we're going to get together here in a minute. We got a few things to go over, so yeah, that's. Uh, that's and he's perfect. really done a good job at it. He's, uh, he's took the initiative, and he's going to, he's going to try to implement the the meetings again for the committee. Yeah, uh, and that's. Now, I think that's important to get back on their feet because we need to get the. I, I, I strongly have said it since day one. We need to stiffen it up a little bit. So we need to we need to get the positive, yeah. and we need to see how we we can get the I committee have involved. Our board members, and you know, going through the the bylaws and everything I've read, uh, supposed to have a monthly meeting. Yeah. And I don't think they've been having you know the yep. monthly meetings. So I, I'm going to have a meeting with so, them next Friday. And, Told them that you know we got some things we got to go over. Yeah, there, there's there's a lot of business that needs some, to be some done. You know, so some hearings and stuff yep. that's going to come up. So yep. And you're yeah. here. I'm just going to make sure because I know there's been some questions about you know enforcement and, and liens and, and cleanup from the city standpoint for people who don't comply. You know, just a reminder. You know, none of that. It, we can't do any enforcement. <coughs> on the property we cleaned it up in absolute emergency. Another citation has been issued. Oh, yeah. and it's a yeah. final order. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So and then there's a process to go through that. So just. I know in the past there's been some confusion when they just send out people to clean them. Like, oh, can't no, do that no, you got to do the, the citation and the finals and, and all that. So, you know, but like I said, everybody's, you know, I've, I've worked with her on doing all the the, uh, the abandonment properties and we've tried to get that all squared away as soon as I come in. And and, uh, and a lot of them, some of them have been taken off because they, you know, uh, have been working on them or whatnot. So, uh, but still, I'm keeping an eye on a few of them. That's, that's kind of still. But, uh, we'll get there. I, I I called him on one, and I come home that evening, and they they was out there taking care of it. It's <laughs> like, all right, that's good, good deal. So if y'all have anything, just get a hold of Mr. Henderson. Yeah, um, yeah. Appreciate it. I wanted to bring him in, give a little update, and and just if you can basically get everybody on the yeah. same page and see if we can. We'll get something passed on that other. Oh, yeah, I'll, so. I'll take care of that yeah. next Friday. Yeah. So I get that. All right. And I'll put you on so Appreciate yep. it. Yep. Thank All you. right, Nancy. Thank you. That's what this would take a while. Well, do you want to give them just a briefing on it? That's what, and then, I, that's what I have that's on the very front of it. So yeah, just, just give them a briefing on that real quick. And that, that way they can be reviewed and discussed. You all have pamphlets, and if you just want to pick up the very first second pamphlet, um, this is what we did for updating our ordinances because they were very, very old and they needed a bad look, and some more need to be done as well. But what we worked on this time, it's uh, the uh, terms and definitions, that's Article 2, Article 11 is time regulations, and then we have 6, that's establishment of districts. That was what was worked on the most. If, if you look at terms and definitions, uh, they didn't really change, but I have, I have a suggestion on changing a few of them. Uh, had a meeting on the 14th myself with my ward uh, the other day. And so they approved what it said. This is my board for you. They said, what do you think? And I said, it's not what I think. I said, Doc, you all have them? I want you to look at them and stuff, and they had, so because I got them to them earlier. So um, they approved them, but I haven't got them signed yet because we haven't been back for a meeting, but I have a copy of those in here also. The uh, first thing is the, uh, uh, followed all the regulations for an amendment to our proposal for amendment for planning and zoning. Um, 
public necessity. We had to have those parents. So we did that. Um, and I have this second page here just to show you where we had our meeting before it came. And, they all, and all my person signed the paper that I'm going to let the second one would be the application for changing the ordinance. So it's got in here that that's what this is, and then legal documents and all the things that would go along with our, our uh, comprehensive plan that I've put in there to say that it was acceptable to it. I updated that, and uh, so we have a copy of that as well. The first page is giving you, again, what you have to do to do this, public hearing, notices. And then after my city council would uh, sign off on the minutes, um, I have to make sure that you all have a copy of those as well, because that's actually for a an ordinance change where you get a do that and you have to have, to have a number of sides. Where's my paper at? So I'm thinking that we're part of book, two public hearings. It'll be two reading. It'll be, it has to be read twice. And uh, what I will do, Nancy, is is once you tell me that we're good, I will prepare the proposed ordinance for a summary so that for publication purposes it's not this many pages long. And yeah. we'll get that we'll, we'll get that prepared for the first and second up. reading so we can get passed. Right. So I, but I really wanted them to have me to go over and it is rough draft because when I started doing all this in my group, I said, What do you want, what do you want? And they said they don't want to they just say, Go ahead. And uh, I don't want to go ahead. So I told them, I said, Well, this is a rough draft and I wanted you to look at it to tell me the changes that you thought you were doing. So they did take time to look at it and they said well, you're going to update any kind of errors and different things and, and put in some definitions because I didn't want to change some definitions. <laughs> and uh, they said, just go ahead and do it. And they voted that in, that I just go ahead and do it. Well, and I said, I have to have Tara <laughs> help me with that before I would even go any farther. So Nancy and I have been working uh, for several months now mm -hmm. with, as, as well as with uh, the uh, Sean... Uh, who came and did some training for the planning and zoning to uh, basically to get the or these particular portions of our ordinance up to date and compliant with our current comprehensive plan that we just adopted a few years back. Uh, this does allow for Nancy to have a bit more leeway when businesses want to come into town without having to go through all the hoops of conditional use permit. It, it gives her a lot more flexibility and it's, bit, it's more business friendly, I would say. Uh, for our district, so I think that that is a uh, that's a big thing. And the signage <coughs> issue, we've had some constitutional cases that have come come down the pipe that we required a few changes on some of our signage language in our ordinance. But uh, she's giving you all this for you all to look at. This and then is you'll our, have to write it up. Right. This is this is the draft that we have. There may be a few small changes that we still have. I think she's outlined a few. But yes. what I will do is uh, before the next meeting, Nancy and I'll get together and actually draft. Uh, the text amendment and, uh, and, language for this right. to be read for everyone. And I would, I would ask that the council members review this and, and if they have any questions on this, because this, uh, there's a lot of language in there, yeah. and so uh, that gives time to review and maybe have questions at a later date if you see something that you all studied over. I did need to bring something up. The business district is what was really changed, because if you notice that in Harford and all the way through Beaverdown, everything's a B3. We only have the courthouse down here and right by the river that are B2 and a B1. Right. That's it. Mm -hmm. So what did that let me do? Or let anything. But I went to each time, a lot of times I'd go to the mayor and say, what do you want me to do? This business wants to come in and, and it'll fit there. But And they always say, take in any business you can. I, yeah. You know, and I understand that because you yeah. want your businesses to come in and they have room and parking spaces everything you want so that will help that a lot but um, I do have to ask about uh, businesses and having an apartment you know or something on the ground floor behind them that you could possibly do that because I talked with Paul about it and I uh, wanted to make sure that you all have some kind of suggestion because you can't let keep in mind you cannot let that apartment or that section right there interfere and be in the same drive and stuff that you have trucks and everything coming through. They have to have. They would have to somehow have a separate drive for them 
that stays out of anything to do with that business because uh, even even a loading and unloading dock in the back of a business, they have to have a way to get out to not get through the traffic that's, you know, persons and clients. They can't intermingle with them. Now, that's been that way for a long time. So I always have to make sure that they have a way to get in that they can go ahead and circle and come out. It's not getting with the front of the, so I don't know how that would work with the apartment because I know each mayor, again, has wants to have more living quarters and that's our contract yeah. you know what we did in a and the comprehensive plan was state that yeah. we would try to work towards having more living quarters yeah. okay. I, I will say that it was recommended <coughs> by the gentleman that, that did the training that in the business districts we still refrain from first level living quarters just because it does tend to uh, sometimes be perverted by certain people as to how they kind of manipulate the usage of that area, but that what this does, is all, as well as with our comprehensive plan, it does allow us to have more, instead of saying, oh, you want to put a duplex here, you can now. You, 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 can, you can put it in just because there might be some single family residences, so long as we've relaxed a few of those uh, requirements in our comp plan, as well as the business inside some of those residential districts. So it does give us some more leeway. Uh, I think. And I think, you know, I needed to ask this question because I don't know the answer. I don't know what you would want to consider, but it could be a possible way to have more places. And it could also, what I thought would be good, it was a place you wanted to have because I worked this before. Um, guard, they want security. And so they want somebody living on the property. So I just don't know how you work it except to get them a different dri driveway that they don't intermingle with the business at all. And it would need to be kind of for the business is the reason you had it there. I think you'd need some kind of stipulations just saying, right. we're going to put apartments back here. <laughs> we can't do that. So if you all want to think about that. Uh, about and that doesn't business, have to be part of this amendment. It, can, huh? it yeah. doesn't have to be part of this amendment. It can come later. Like yeah, that. but I did, I did need to bring it forward because it had been brought to me. So, well, ideally, I mean, and Stacia sits on a committee with uh, the judge and a few others on housing um, you know we it's it is a dire need and we don't know the approach that we want to take at it but we know we, we want to see explore the ideas yeah but we don't know where either. well y'all don't give us ideas we don't know what money might want so well there's That's property that we there's property that we've looked at and st stuff like that and try to work I would like to see some, somebody develop it and um, maybe like the, what is that over there Taylor is it Taylor's over there mm -hmm. the double wide place over there or whatever yeah there's there, there are a few different things that we can talk about we you know there, there's planned communities and stuff of that nature that there, there are some aspects of planning and zoning what we run into is that, unfortunately, um, city limits are only so big. That's that is the that is the big thing yeah. there too. I believe you did ask me at one time about uh, maybe I wanted to put in maybe tiny houses somewhere with a cheaper that bed, was that bedroom and all that, that was that. a discussion. I looked it up. It would have to go under the plan unit development. And, and, and then they would go that. into like the uh, it, it would almost be classified like an RV park as well. Like so. So that was another issue. So we, we you couldn't really there's a lot of hurdles in there. You but wouldn't want mixed uses unless you uh, because you could put a, an area in the middle for everybody to meet, sit down, to offer something. You could do that. You could put places around like that, but you don't want to mix in big houses, little houses. Right. Yeah. And yep. the planned unit development would almost yep. be kind of like an HOA type thing right. scenario. So you're yeah, you might want you could at the time if it's a, a plan. Then you don't have to follow exactly what I would say. I would have to work with you, see what you say, mm -hmm. and make sure you've got the room to do it. And those have to have, I think it's a five or ten acres to, to start yeah. that. And that's running into the city limit issues that we're into. Yeah. But it could be a good thing. But right now, I think the biggest thing, like I said, is well, these three things that she's put. Just trying to get that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And if, if anybody has any questions or anything, because. Nancy and I, we have looked at this a lot. But sometimes when you look at something a lot, it's easy to overlook or to yeah. think you see something that's not really there. So just uh, review it, and then I guess if you have something by the next meeting, we'll we'll pass. As soon as Nancy gives me the go,
Well, I was going to tell you that the person that helped write this up is the one that trained. So I had to have training so that we could have these done and have everybody trained. So you all helped pay for that. And uh, so got everybody to be trained. So I yep. appreciate it very much. But uh, that was great. And the trainer, uh, he's a director planning and zoning uh, for the state. And luckily enough, I knew him years ago, so he's been helping us all along. And uh, he did most of this, so like the terms, those type of things, I'm, and especially the signage, I'm not touching it, <laughs> if you all would not care, because he took that from the changes that the state had taken yeah. in. And so that was great, because it could be very confusing. Right. So that one, I think it's pretty good. And then the terms and definitions, other than the fact that you have to think about, there's a section in there under health care. And I need to bring that up because I have researched it, looked at it, pulled things off the internet. And if you have something that's in inpatient, that should fall under conditional use going in. But if you have something that's outpatient, like a boy's home or uh, places to right. get doctor's appointments and yep. drug stores and all that stuff, there's no in-house, no staying, then that should fall under just being able to put it in. So we have to work on that really what is called a convalescent home, what's called a nursing home. And I just want to see if I could just change it off. One inpatient, the other saying uh, outpatient facilities for health. Right. I'm going to come up with something. <laughs> well, I think in our definitions we added the term of clinic, which is, you know, care, no. human care, medical, but limited to outpatient only. So I think that's... Yeah. You're going to see it both ways in there. That's why I'm telling you this right now, because it, ha it needs to be adjusted. So that's one thing that I'm I will change, but I'm not. I don't want to change everything. And then everybody come back and say, "Well, I don't like it, and don't like that, or I do like that." So that's why I want you to have it now. And and the front. It's You've been talking enough about that. Why do you want to change convalescent nursing home to they're mixed up in patient or outpatient? Because there was a difference, and we hadn't we hadn't determined it. And I said, "You got to determine." We it. have to determine it. Well, I, I have, to get, state have to get that, dude. We have to go by, you know, what it's termed. What is in the KRS. Yeah, that's both. Well, to develop our regulations. Yeah, so I guess you would say it that way. But uh, I looked up what is a, I don't know, a, you might say this, the Civic Center. What's a, different things like that. But I said out, out, outpatient and inpatient. That would solve the whole thing. No, it would. Well, you can write something. <laughs> we said it won't be. I know what. All right, so well, that's all the information that we have on that. I um, uh, Tara, you just you get it back to us whenever we can, and then we'll regroup on this matter at the next meeting, and if we if we have to. Um, does anybody in the crowd have anything that they need to bring forward? If not, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn this meeting. I, I do have one question. Okay. Uh, it, it was actually brought up to me, and I told them that I'd be at a city council meeting, so they asked me to. I had a couple people concerned, especially when they leave my office. They go beside on there on Washington Street over here to pull out beside the radio station. Uh, there's been a lot of food trucks down there, so it's been more noticeable and more of an issue. But the, the, the first parking spot there, right in front of the, it, it blocks yep. your view, and it's very dangerous to pull out. I will uh, send Chief York down there, and I'll also call... Uh, I think the radio station's the one that's Well, and it's, it's not even just, it's, it's more or less just, it's so close to the curb there that anything, yep. if anything is parked there, you can't see. Yep, anymore. I'll take care of that. Uh, but yes, I, I will take care of that. I have a first uh, by Tony Renfro to adjourn. Do I have a second? I make a second. I'll take stations. All in favor say aye. Aye. Holds like side, motion carries. Thank you.